Revelations chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 again. This is the theme or the key verse uh, in the book of Colossians, right? If possible, you memorize this. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. He said, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head and all of all principality and power. I want to read again. For in him, in Jesus, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Hallelujah. Uh, what I shared last, uh, the week before last week, because last week I was in Kia. The problem in Colossae, in this church, the church was established, I uh, mentioned that to you before, Paul was not the one who planted this church but uh, Epaphras or Epaphroditus <clears throat> under this church here and some of the members also if you read the book of Philip, uh, uh, Philemon you know uh, Archippus, Apia, uh, Philemon uh, this family and also Onesimus who was the slave of Philemon was in this Colossae so they are part of the members of the church but <clears throat> there is a problem that comes into this church once a person becomes a Christian, when a person, once a person put their faith in Christ, that faith will be tested. Your faith in Jesus Christ will be tested. So this is what happened to the Colossian believer, to the Christian in Colossian. This is considered a new church. A new church. People begin to turn to the Lord, begin to believe in Jesus Christ. Yet the moment they believe in Jesus Christ, their faith in Christ was tested. So what happened? This problem began to come. The, the errors uh, of teachings uh, begin to come into this church. That's why Paul uh, said here in chapter 2 again, verse 6 and 7, he said, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Alright? As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. You have received Christ, the Messiah. His name is Jesus. He is the Lord. That is Christ Jesus the Lord. Christ is the Messiah. He is the sent one. He is the chosen one of God to be the Savior, to be the Redeemer of men. That everybody must turn to Jesus to be saved, to receive this forgiveness of sin, so that their sins will be blotted out. He is the Christ, the chosen one. He is the one that God chose to become the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. Amen. He is the Christ. His name is Jesus. Jesus means Savior, or the one who saves. He is the Lord. So Paul says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Not only believe in Him, not only receive Him or believe Him. Now you are a Christian. You have this faith. You have this profession. But Paul says, not only that, but now you have received Him. He is your Lord. You need to walk in Him. Walk in Him. Very interesting. In verse 7, He said, Rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now that is a, a very important verse for us to read. You know, every portion of this Colossian, every portion of this Colossian. There is a meaning, a message behind it. Why Paul wrote this? Why Paul says that as we have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk in Him, be rooted in Him, be built up in Him, be established in the faith. Why? Because of this wrong teaching that is coming. 
uh, teachings that are confusing the, the believer. So, and, and today, the same thing happened. When you begin to, to be serious with God, when you begin to be serious with your faith, when you begin to be serious with Jesus, uh, you decide, you are, you are saying from today onwards, from this year, I want to know Jesus more. I want to read my Bible more. I want to pray more. I want to come to church more regularly. Be faithful. I want to be faithful with God. The moment you said that, the moment you make up your mind like that, suddenly things happen. Problems will take place. Sometimes, you know, out of nowhere, you begin to be busy. But before that, before you make a decision, years before that, you don't make a decision to be serious with Jesus. Like, wow, you are so free. That you are so free, very free that you cannot even come to church. But now you want to make a decision. You want to be serious with God. You want to be regular in church. Hey, suddenly, now you are busy. Things coming, job increasing, the demands in the family increasing. You begin to be busy. The enemy will send things in your life so that it will stop you from getting serious with God. And this is what happened with the Colossians. We can, we can see a picture, we can see an example here in our Christian faith. You know, we have an enemy. And the enemy always watch us. Even Jesus, the enemy watches Jesus. When Jesus came into this world, when he was in the desert, he was tempted. In all points, the Bible says, it means the devil was watching him. The devil put in a stumbling block here and there in the ways of Jesus. In all points he was tempted. He was tried in every point. The devil watches him. And in Luke chapter 4 he said the devil left him for a season. Why? Because the devil coming again. As long as Jesus lived, as long as Jesus served God, as long as Jesus wants to do his mission for the redemption of man, the devil put a stumbling block. The devil is finding ways to discourage Jesus. The devil is finding ways to make Jesus to give up. That's why Jesus faced a lot of trials and testing. He faced opposition from the teachers of the law, from the Pharisees, the Sadducees, from the leaders, from Herod, from the enemy. Jesus faced a lot of trials and testing, opposition. Why? To discourage Jesus. But you know, it's wonderful to see that Jesus was committed to the mission, was committed to God's will. The Bible says he set his, set his face like a flint towards Jerusalem. Nobody can turn him right or left. Jesus just went to Jerusalem. Why? The cross was there. He said he, look at the cross, despising the shame, because he knew the joy that was set before him. That is Jesus. And that is our example in life. Why Paul says we need to walk in Him because we have received Jesus in our life. Walk in Him, rooted and built up and established in the faith, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Why? Because all this teaching coming. I want to mention these four things. Uh, the other day I mentioned two main problems here. The uh, Judaistic religion and also the Gnostic teaching that come. Uh, but here four, which these two uh, included in these two, or within these two. Number one, uh, Paul wrote this uh, letter to them to give them a warning against uh, philosophy. <clears throat> against philosophy. We need to be careful. Beware, Paul says, chapter 2, verse 8. He said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So he said, beware, in this translation he said, beware of being cheated by philosophy and empty deceit. The tradition of men. You know, most, most traditions of men are not from God. Most traditions of men, uh, people take advantage to, you know, uh, take advantage over men. Uh, it becomes a business, being commercialized, and becomes a business. 
uh, you know, to, to exploit people, to exploit men. So a men's tradition, it becomes a, a place or an avenue for people to take advantage of other people. That's the tradition of men. It's not after Christ. It's not after Christ. The only good tradition that we have is the tradition that is handed from our forefathers, godly forefathers, the Word of God, the, uh, our faith in Christ, genuine faith, solid faith in Christ. That is the only good tradition that we have. Uh, the Bible says in Christ dwells on the fullness of God. You don't, you don't need all these vain uh, deceit and philosophy of men, tradition of men, uh, from the rudiments of the world, all right, principles of the world, not after Christ. We don't need that. We don't need that. That's why we need to be rooted in Christ. We need to walk in Christ, rooted in Him, build up in Him, and establish in Him. Say Amen. amen. Be established in the faith. Number two, uh, he gave a warning in his letter against the Judaistic ceremonialism. Right? So they become a Christian now. They become believers now. They are set free from all the ceremonial uh, practices of the Judaistic religion. Because all those ceremonies, those are traditions of the Jews. But in Christ, we do not need that because... They are fulfilled in Christ with the washing of their hands and all of that. You know, a lot of observances that they do uh, among the Jews. Hallelujah. Uh, in verse 16, he said, Let no man therefore judge you in food, in drink, in respect of a holiday. The Jews, they have a lot of holidays. Uh, or of the new moon. Or of the Sabbath days. Paul wrote this here in Colossians. Yet many Christians today observe a lot of things now from the Jewish uh, tradition, Jew Jewish practices. A lot of Christians today observe Sabbaths. Many. I'm not saying Seventh-day Adventists. These are Christians. Yet they observe the Sabbath. But here, Paul wrote this down here. Are you better than Paul the Apostle? If you are observing that, you are saying to Paul, Paul, you are not correct. We are correct. We found a new revelation now. We keep the Sabbath because Sabbath benefit us now. Who benefit you? The Sabbath of Christ. That is what Paul is saying. So if we keep the Sabbath today, like many Christians are doing that today, they are saying they are better than Paul the Apostle. But Paul says, let no man judge you in food, in drink, in respect of holidays, or of the new moon, and of the Sabbaths, Sabbath days. Verse 17, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. It means the substance is of Christ. You have the substance now. Why do you want the shadow? Hallelujah. You have the real thing now. Why do you want to have the shadow? The example. You have the real thing. And that is Jesus Christ. We have the real things now. So, he warned them against the That they will fall back into this Judaistic ceremonies, all the ceremonialism that they have. Paul is warning them, you need to keep your faith. You are free in Christ. You are complete in Christ, Paul says in chapter 2 verse 10. You are complete. You don't need this additional. You don't need these extras in your life. You are complete in Christ Jesus. Amen. Say amen. Come on, say with me, I am complete in Christ. I'm Right, say it like you mean it. Say, I am complete in Christ. I am complete in Christ. Hallelujah. So Paul warned them, don't fall back into those Judaistic ceremonies. Today many, huh? many. After this, uh, uh, Malaysia now can go to Israel to visit the Israel in the Middle East. Many churches, many Christians go to Israel. And they learn things from there and they bring it back here in Malaysia. Many, many. They bring it back. 
and they teach the churches. You need to observe this, observe this, observe this. This is what they do there in Israel. This is what benefit the church, benefit the church, benefit the church. You know, some they go into the numbering, the Hebrew numbers, the Hebrew characters, and all of that. You know, to make the teaching interesting. As if that the number governs the Christian church. At least the num uh, 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 as if that the Hebrew numericals or the Hebrew uh, characters governs the church. Wow. Hallelujah. I feel sorry for those people in the kampong, like deep in the village. They don't know Hebrew and Greek. They don't know all these Hebrew numbers and Hebrew characters. I think they will go to hell. They will miss God's blessing. All those people in the Ulu Ulu, those in the deep interior, they don't even have a Bible. But praise God, the Bible says, You are complete in Him. A lot of burden are they put in the Christians. You know, Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Hallelujah. He said, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You need to stand fast in the liberty that Christ has made you free. Number three, God and Paul gave them this warning against angel worship. Angel worship. Chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Worshiping of angels. Some Christians today, they are so into angels or angelic visitation. Some more they said in a prayer meeting, they say they saw angels feathers falling on the floor. So they pick it up and take pictures and send it to their friends and everywhere. And said in a prayer meeting last night, angel of God came down and they leave some feathers there. How do you know? Maybe somebody bring this feather, uh, duck feather or chicken feather, you know, to dig, dig their... Uh, ears like that, you know, some older people do that, right? And then maybe they leave it there or forget. So you said angels, feathers. No. Worship of angels. They're so, you know, intrigued by angels. But Paul says, don't let people beguile you. All of all this, voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. People now are waiting, praying, expecting angels to come and visit them and preach the gospel to them. Angels come and you know bring a message to them about World War II, World War III. Angel come, you know, and even they give the name angels, Angel Uriel, Angel Raphael, Angel Malchai Sidek, you know, Angel uh, who is that in the Mormon's church? Nepi. And all of that. No. God has given us the Bible. The Bible is a complete word of God. Say amen. amen. God will not give another new revelation. God will not send another angel and to give you a new revelation of God's word. And God's word is all here in the Bible. The Bible revealed to us from the beginning to the end. Of God's will and God's word. There is no other new revelation. Paul has warned us. Be careful. Don't fall into this. Being intrigued by the angel's visitation. Angel come to you and speak about God and Jesus. Why not read the Bible? Hello. Those who are lazy to read the Bible, they are so excited and intrigued about angels. That's why many of them got cheated and you know, fall into errors. They become funny in their faith. Some ministers, some preachers of the gospel become so funny. They become weird. There's a lady come here before from U.S. Uh, teaching about angels and believe in the movement and the activities of angels. You know, when she's preaching, suddenly she will just stop and listen, 
Yeah, yeah, talking to the angel. Yeah, yeah, I see the angel walking here and there. You know, I just attend the meeting one night and I feel so funny. We never come again, right? You remember that? I don't believe. I don't even come for prayer and ask this lady to pray for me. I know something is wrong. But then after a few months, she went back to U.S. After a few months, few months, my friend messaged me and said, Pastor, don't accept this woman again. She is a false teacher. See, I know it already. Before you tell me, I know it. I know, I can feel it in my heart, my spirit. It's wrong. Why not read the Bible? Why wait for the angel to come and speak to you about the word of God? God has given us the Bible. Read it. Study it. Meditate it. Day and night. Mm. And you hear the voice of God. Say amen. 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 Many people are also crazy about prophecy. Why not read the Bible? You have personal prophecy every day from the Word of God. Every every day, almost every day. I just saw a few weeks uh, uh, the other day. But almost every day, I, I post something in the Facebook, a verse, and, uh, and then I send it to our WhatsApp group to encourage us. You know. So I just listen to my heart what God wants to say the word that is relevant today. And every time I sit down there, a verse comes to me and I just need to copy it, paste it, and then post it there so that you can read it to encourage you. Today is Isaiah 41 verse 10. God said, do not fear. Do not fear for I am with you. I will strengthen you. I will help you, God said. I will uphold you by my right hand of righteousness. This is the word of God to you. You don't need a prophet to come and tell you that. <laughs> you don't need a personal prophecy to encourage you like that. It's in the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, the Bible says do not despise prophecy. I do believe in prophecy. Last night we have a word of knowledge. I was praying for the people and then we call all the children to pray for them. And while I was praying for them, I just feel something in my heart, you know, and I tried to, to know what it is. So after praying, and I just stopped for a while and I feel this in my heart that I need to say this word. So I said this word, before we close, I said, I, I want to say this word to you because it's very important. I said, some of you here, at least a few here, still uh, working with, with black magic, with witchcraft. I said, if you want to be prayed for now, you can come. I don't want to embarrass you, but you can come and be prayed for now. If not, after this meeting, don't delay. Talk to your pastor and ask him to pray for you and be delivered. I just said that. In my heart, I said, hey, why I said that? You know, in my mind, I said, why I said that? Why, are you, why I, am I so confident to tell that? You know, I don't know those people. But I just say it because I feel it in my heart. It's like the voice of the Spirit of God speaking to me. To tell the people. And nobody came. They just closed the prayer. Nobody came to be prayed for. So we closed Makan and then we went back. So in my room, no, in, not in my room, on the way down from, from Cameron, on the way down, a message came to my phone. And uh, she kind of read because I was driving, so she kind of read a message. And the pastor sent me a message. He said, Pastor, the person has come to me and asked for prayer. The person that you mentioned just now, dealing with witchcraft. So he sent a photo. It's a, a lady. You know, went to the pastor after we left, asked to be prayed for to be delivered. We do not despise prophecy. We don't despise word of knowledge. God can speak and all. But we read his word. The word of God speaks to us. And this is his word. I, I, I'm uh, led to uh, memorize again Psalm 91, uh, 60 verses. Uh, I begin to meditate on it and pray. It's a powerful uh, Psalm 91. Try to do it, especially in this time now. It's a promise of God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That is very powerful. What is the secret place of the Most High? That is prayer. 
He that dwells in prayer, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, you shall abide, you will stay in the shadow of the Almighty God. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. I like verse 3, it says, Surely, surely, He shall deliver thee. Wow, that is powerful. God speak to you. Surely, I will deliver you. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes, God said, surely, I will deliver you. Wow. We'll deliver you from the pestilence. We'll deliver you from the noisome pestilence. God will deliver us. Meditate on it. Meditate on it. That word is really personal. God is speaking to you personally. That is the word that you need to carry today. Especially at this season, at this time. With this virus is spreading around. Dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Dwell in prayer. Live there. And you shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Say amen. 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 That is us who believe in Christ. Who believe in Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. The worship of angels. Number four, warning against ascetism. Ascetism verse 20 to 23 chapter 2. He said, Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances, touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. All these are teaching of men, not the teaching of the word of God. Verse 23, Which things have indeed a show of wisdom, in will worship and humility, neglecting of the body, that is ascetism, neglecting of the body, putting the body into subjection, putting the body into discipline, not in honor, uh, not in any other to the satisfying of the flesh. Ascetism. You know, the, uh, the way to kill the body, to you know, the last and all of this, so they put the body into... But that is human ways. Human ways. Not God's way. God's, God said we need to put the flesh to death. We need to mortify the days of the flesh. That is through the work of God, the Holy Spirit, from the Word of God, you know, obeying the Word of God. So we are able to do it because of the grace of God, not by human uh, effort. So Paul wrote these Colossians to warn these believers because now they are getting serious with God, establishing the faith. They are begin to walk with God. They, they live their pagan life. They live their Judaistic religion, all the ceremonies and all. So this pagan background and uh, Judaistic background Christian, now when they believe in Christ, these errors comes again into them, wants to make them to relapse, to fall back into all these uh, wrong kinds of teaching, wrong kinds of worship. But Paul is encouraging them so that they will know that they are complete in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Complete in Him. Now once you are a Christian, now I, I love this when I meditate about this. I love this, being a Christian, being a believer of Jesus Christ because God has set us free. No burden. There's no, you know, you don't have to live in the do and don'ts. People live in legalism. They are very legalistic. This one don't touch, don't handle, this one don't. There's so many. They do it, don't, don't go to this place, you know. For the Filipinos, when they go to cemetery, you know, when they go back from the cemetery, before they enter the house, they will, they will take this dry grass from the cemetery. They take the dry grass. So when they, before they enter the house, they burn this dry grass, you know, on the staircase there before they go into the house. And the smoke, they will, you know, step over the smoke. Why? Because they believe when you burn this dry grass, the smoke, when you cross, step over the smoke, the spirit from the cemetery will not go in with you in the house. Now, a lot of these do and don'ts, a lot of this protocol, a lot of these rules and all, why wow, is so burdensome, so burdensome. These don't do, you know, see, 
when Good Friday comes. There's a lot of rules and regulations. Don't do this on Good Friday. They said in Good Friday, you cannot cook or you cannot fry pork meat. They said it will never cook. Because meat, they said the body of Jesus. We need to honor the body of Jesus. So don't eat meat. Just eat veggie or eat fish. Don't cook meat. Because we need to honor them. Nothing in the Bible like that. Hallelujah. Good Friday, I want to enjoy bakute. <laughs> Good Friday, I want to enjoy you know, pork chop. Enjoy it. You are not bound. They said, oh, be careful. If you cook meat on Good Friday, God will curse you. Something bad will happen to you. Oh, praise God. There's so many rules. Do and don't. Do and don't. So many. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't face here. Don't face here. No. You need to drink in this way. You need to eat in this guy, this time. There's so many rules. But in Christ Jesus, there is freedom. Amen. And I love to believe in Jesus. I love to walk and live with Jesus because of the freedom that Jesus has given to me. I am not bound by rules except God's rules. Yeah. I am not by, bound by the rules of man, the teaching of man, only by Jesus. The rule. And one of the rules of Jesus is love. You are bound by the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus gives you the freedom. Not freedom to sin. Not freedom to live in liberalism. Not freedom, you know, just to live your own life and still praising the Lord. No. Freedom to live. You are free to live because of Jesus Christ. How wonderful it is. You don't, you don't have to, I don't carry burden in my life. You know, that I've not fulfilled this, I've not fulfilled that, I've not fulfilled no, I don't carry all this burden because I am free in Christ Jesus. Wow, honey. I mean, if you are a Jew, you're living like a Jew and all those observances, I tell you, I don't know whether you can, you know, able to do it. There's so many things on the Sabbath day, you cannot do it, like almost you cannot move. They told me in Israel on the Sabbath day, on the Sabbath day, when you go into the leaf, you know, every day you press the button, you know, first floor, second floor, third floor, you know. But on the Sabbath day, you cannot press the button. It's a sin. So only on the Sabbath, the leaf is automatic. So you just enter there, go in, then you just go where you want to go. It's automatic because you cannot press. It is work on the Sabbath. You need to rest. Don't do anything. You cannot even wash your full stick because that is a sin. It's a work. You cannot work on the Sabbath. What a burdensome life. But Jesus came to set us free. Amen. Because in Him, we are complete and we have the freedom. But that is the blessing. That is the benefit. That is the beauty when you have Jesus Christ in your life. You don't have to be afraid of all these curses flying here and there. You know, the spirit come to your house because you have not done this thing, not done this thing. So the spirit come and visit you. You don't have to worry about all of these things. You are free in Christ Jesus. Amen. They said when you don't do this, you are a curse, you are a curse, you have this curse. No, you are free in Christ Jesus. How wonderful it is. This is why this Bible, this word of God is called the good news. It is a good news. Glad tidings that has been given to us. It's good news and we can rejoice in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to continue this again next week. Maybe one two more, then we move on to another book. Okay? Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. I want to encourage you today. We need to really find our true identity in Christ. We need to really know who we are in Christ Jesus. And we need to remember when you believe in Jesus, when you begin to be serious with God, your faith will be tested. Your faith will be tested. And Paul encouraged us in Colossians chapter 2 just now, verse 6 and 7, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, 
He said, so walk in Him. Root, build up, establish in the faith, abounding the rain with thanksgiving. So, that is the reason why Paul said like that. He wrote this. He said, you need to walk in Him because you are receiving rooted in Him, build up in Him, establish in Him. Why? Because your faith will be tested. You will be shaken. The enemy come and put a stumbling block. He will send this, you know, uh, you know, uh, sort of like a religion, like a, a good thing to you, but, it, but actually it binds you, it burdens you, and it creates a bondage in your life, and you will not be living free in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you. Your word today, I pray that you will continue to speak to us. Thank you for opening your word to us. Making us to understand your word. Making us to know we, who we are in you. And what we have. What we have been blessed. What Jesus has done for us. Lord, thank you so much. We rejoice. Because in Jesus, there is freedom. In Jesus, we are complete, Lord. We don't need all these additionals. We don't need all these extras in our life because we are free from the outbreaks of this coronavirus. In Jesus' name, we believe in you. We thank you for Psalm 91. Lord, we stand upon your word, Psalm 91 in our life. And you will protect us. We give you praise. We believe this virus will die off. Amen. In Jesus' name. And we declare it, Lord, soon. By April, in Jesus' name, we declare that this virus will be gone in Jesus' name. We pray, we declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is greater than all of this. We love you, Father. We praise you. You bless us, bless every uh, hands that give today, bless our offering. We thank you for each and every one of us that did the bless this church. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God.